already got our own corticosteroids, but it'll take weeks then for them to... Then let's drown them in corticosteroids. And this is the kind of thing House does every day. I'll do it myself. If you're wondering why Cuddy's playing House, it's because he's going on vacation and she told him to get off early as she didn't agree with his plan to end the pregnancy. Very excited to be reacting to House MD Season 3, Episode 17, Fetal Position. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 House videos. This will be Episode 77. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. Is the rock star supposed to be late? Not the rock star photographer. Sorry, morning sickness. Who's in charge of the backdrop? Naomi. Well, the words are completely jumbled. You can read that? Of course. What's what's the mnemonic? Uh, F, F is for face. Is, is my smile crooked? Call 911. Tell them the man is struck. Oh, this is the exact opposite of the very first episode of House and both got it really wrong. It's like you go to an indoor soccer match wearing studs and someone asks you to go change and you bring back wellies instead. You see, for the first episode, there was a teacher who suddenly developed a speech disturbance and wrote help me on a board to her students. Now we've got a pregnant photographer who can't read language but is able to speak it and realize that she's having a stroke and tell them to call an ambulance. Pretty awesome that she mentioned the mnemonic though, fast. Oh God, I, I could be having a, oh, what's, what's the mnemonic? It describes the symptoms of a stroke so that people can get medical attention quickly. Face is for sudden facial droop, which is where one side of the face is paralyzed, but this is important. You still have eyebrow movement on that side. The reason why is that there are a few things that can paralyze your face. If it's from your brain, you can still move your eyebrow, but if it's further down the pathway, like in Bell's palsy, then the eyebrow can't move. What about the rest of the acronym though? A is for arm weakness on one side. S is for speech or more specifically slurring of the speech. T is for time and that's because there's a window to bust the clot called the thrombolysis window. If we catch it within four and a half hours of symptom onset, then we can restore the blood flow with hopefully minimal lasting damage. Sometimes people present outside that window though. What happens then? Well, if you present within 12 hours and the clot is in an eligible area, like in the basilo or middle cerebral artery, then we can fish it out with a procedure called a thrombectomy. I was had a 38 year old woman who was tying her shoelaces at the bottom of her stairs become unconscious. She was blue lighted to us and had a clot in the big artery that supplies her brainstem and that put her in a coma. We made a cut in the groin and put catheter up to her brainstem and then pulled the clot out and it was about two centimeters long. Within three days, she walked out of the hospital with no residual symptoms. Madness. Anyways, let's find out more about our patient. The boss says you're important. Arms out in front of you like you're holding a pizza. Close your eyes. We take thousands of photos of someone, but only one has to look good. It's not about looking good. People are always hiding things. I just keep shooting until I can see what's really inside them. Vessels don't look so hot. I'm rescinding Macman's discharge order. Not a moment you will want to cherish. It looks almost like he's caring. The value of a photo is taking a rare moment and immortalizing it, a bolt of lightning, a rare flower blooming, house showing his soft side. We now have proof it's in there. What's even more interesting than her photography skills though is her symptoms. The way her hand started twisting when she closed her eyes is called pronated drift. It's a symptom of stroke as the neural pathways that feel the hand's position in space called proprioception are disrupted. We only start relying on that position sense when our eyes shut, hence the hand starts moving faster than a carbon neutral pledge. That and the abnormal vessels in the eye are pretty ordinary signs of stroke, but what about the blood in the urine? It's way more spicy. It, on the background of a stroke, she could have a vasculitis, preeclampsia, kidney cancer, pyelonephritis, which is a urine infection that's gone up to the kidneys, and so many other causes. At this point, I'd want to know her blood tests, including kidney function, the urine dip, and lab analysis for infection and protein, and an ultrasound, and take it from there. First she strokes, now her kidneys are shutting down. Transaxial slice, calcified mitral valve. The balloon will force the valve back open and you'll be fine. Well, good news is Emma's heart is fixed. Bad news is it's not her underlying problem. Her kidneys are still failing. You put all your patients through this main test or just the important ones? Your body is functioning properly. There's something wrong with the fetus. 
Welcome to the world of maternal mirror syndrome. Interesting, we have two patients and it's the cute little devil that needs our attention. Now, how does that relate to maternal mirror syndrome? Well, it touches on a condition which I mentioned earlier called preeclampsia, and it's when that is combined with excessive fluid around the baby or fetal hydrops is what we call it. It's thankfully very rare and can be caused by blood type mismatches between the baby and mother. We're not sure exactly why it happens, but know that problems with the placenta can lead to it and make the mother very unwell. The main treatment is delivery of the baby, but it seems here that she's early in the third trimester, so it'd be very risky to do so. Giving steroids and waiting a couple of days can help mature the baby's lungs, but we would definitely want to make sure that, that was the actual diagnosis first. It's odd because they said the ultrasound was normal, and if it were actually maternal mirror syndrome, you would be able to see the increased fluid there in the baby. Something doesn't quite add up, so there's definitely more thinking to be done here. Question for you smart people though, what percentage of pregnancies are successfully carried to completion? Answers down below. Good news is, we fixed the fetus, mom gets better. So we need another scan. We'll just ask the fetus to lie very, very still. I'm going to paralyze it. The problem's with the bladder. It's four times normal size. And we can fix that by inserting a shunt. If this doesn't work out, you can always try again. I'm 42. Maybe it's um, just not meant to be. The fetus's urine had appropriate levels of protein and electrolytes, so its kidneys aren't damaged. Whoa, 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 did Cuddy just say, if it doesn't work out, you can just try again? Where did she do her communication skills training? Cobra Tate University. For a woman in their 20s, the chance of getting pregnant on their first menstrual cycle of attempting is around 30%. Over the age of 40, the chance of getting pregnant per cycle with perfect timing of intercourse drops to just 5%. See, women are born with all of their eggs in their ovaries, and the highest quality eggs are released earlier in a woman's reproductive cycle. That means after the age of 30, the quality of the eggs and therefore fertility begins to decline. That is directly correlated with the rates of genetic diseases like Down syndrome, where the risk of getting it in a child when a mother is 25 is around 1 in 1 to 50, and by age 45, it becomes 1 in 30. So if you want kids as a female, it's best to complete your family before the age of 35, ideally, but it's still possible after with many women having done it. Seems like her child still has good organ function though, so maybe there's hope yet. We're gonna put the shunt in. Your baby's lungs should have more room to grow and your symptoms should go away. I'm keeping a visual memory book of this entire surreal process and this is the best part of the story so far. Your stomach is killing me. Emma's jaundiced. Her liver's shutting down. Liver failure puts her case back in the unsolved pile. Maternal mirror syndrome has one surefire cure. Deliver the fetus. So you'll kill the baby. Fetus. You're not going to make it two more days. I won't consent. So I guess you have two days to figure it out. Oh, this is getting so spicy. The team have two days to try and fix the problem with the baby, otherwise both mother and child could die. This isn't quite accurate as the average person with decompensated liver disease lives not for two days, but more like two years. It does make for great television though. To treat this in that time scale, let's go back to basics. What do we know so far? Well, the mother is 21 weeks pregnant. She had what we think was a stroke and now the baby has hydrox fetalis with swelling of the placenta and was unable to pass urine naturally, so it was backing up in the bladder. The team then operated on the baby while in the womb to correct that obstruction. Now our lady has liver failure with deranged enzymes, the whole shebang. The episode is titled fetal position so what if the team are looking in the wrong place because there's a fetus in the womb but her non-identical twin got lost after fertilization maybe they found their way up to the liver and are growing there as an ectopic pregnancy it can happen extremely rarely with a rate of one in 15 thousand pregnancies actually being a liver pregnancy. If it is that though, then she's in serious danger because the liver is highly vascular, so a baby growing in there can rupture it at any moment, which would lead to massive internal hemorrhage. At this point in the pregnancy, she would need surgery to remove the second fetus in the liver and could still save the first one. In fact, she's above 40 and tried before to get pregnant, which means she could have used 
fertility meds, which can make twin pregnancies and complications more likely. This would fit so well and be very house-esque. So that's got to be my second diagnostic guess. If you can't conceive of a better house reaction than this, then check out the channel membership. You get priority access to new videos, access to exclusive polls, and to suggest another series and episode for me to react to. The first 30 members have a chance to win a one hour, one-on-one -on -one tutor session with me on the topic of your choice. We currently have 29 members with just one spot left. So press join now to secure it. I'll keep working tirelessly to make it worth it while. Let's assume she had Mara syndrome, but we fixed it when we fixed the baby's bladder. Her failing liver would be completely unrelated. Pregnant women can develop liver problems. Come in from above. Transjugular hepatic biopsy. You're through the hepatic vein. Firing the needle. The uses heart rate just dropped to 50. Preterm labor. Started to breed a lean drip. The contractions have subsided for now. And the liver biopsy was negative. Preterm labor can be a new symptom. The only organ we haven't been able to look inside is its lungs. The problem must be in We've there. We've already got our own corticosteroids, but it'll take weeks then for them to... Then let's drown them in corticosteroids. And this is the kind of thing House does every day. I'll do it myself. It's time to terminate. Either get me a laryngoscope or get out. Now the mom's lungs are shutting down. I got the baby's lungs to expand. His tissue buds are new. If you're wondering why Cuddy's playing house, it's because he's going on vacation and she told him to get off early and she didn't agree with his plan to end the pregnancy. That's because she wants a child for herself and is around the same age as the patient, so is getting emotionally attached to the situation. When you lose objectivity as a doctor, it can make you do silly things like overdose a patient on steroids and trash the lungs to try and save the baby. Of course, in the house world, this will have a reason, but in real life, doing things like that have a disastrous consequence. It's for that reason that doctors shouldn't treat friends or family unless it's an emergency situation. What's way more interesting than that though is that we have a new clue, bronchial buds, and I still got one diagnostic guess left. So what do bronchial buds even mean? Well, when the lungs are developing, they have these outpouch chings which almost sprout from the windpipe or trachea and start feeling their way forwards. Usually this bud development is done by around 19 weeks and the base scaffolding of the lungs is pretty much there. After that, you get blood vessels forming and extra layering of the ducts. A baby can start breathing then from around week 20, but still not to a point where they'd be able to sustain themselves outside the womb. Now, how's this saying that the lungs are still budding at 21 weeks, which is quite late. So what could that be? Well, it could be a mass in the lung, like a benign growth or cancer, but generally you'd be able to see that as a shadow. It could also be a more cystic kind of benign growth, which would resemble the buds of lungs more. That's called a congenital cystic adenomatoid malformation. And if that gets big enough, it can cause heart failure and lead to fetal hydrops and maternal mirror syndrome. If that's the case, then draining it or surgery to take it out could fully cure her by removing the strain on the baby's heart, saving both of them. That's gotta be my final diagnostic guess. But question for you smart people, through what vessel does a baby get its oxygen from the mother? Answers down below. If it were really a person and we had no other options, we'd do an exploratory surgery. Well, let's do that. This is incredibly dangerous. The only reason why we're suggesting it is because there's nothing else we can do. I see three well-defined lesions. It's definitely CCAM. I should be able to resect them. It's the mom, she's in VFib. Surgery's not doing this to her, the fetus is. You keep going, you're gonna get electrocuted. Clear. Heart rate's returning to normal. Continue with the lobectomy. Oh, oh, we shouldn't be surprised. Houses always come with a barbecue. What's even more electrifying than Cuddy in this scene though, is that the surgeon said the patient had CCAM. It's definitely CCAM. Do you know what CCAM stands for? Congenital Cystic Adenomatoid Malformation, which was my final diagnostic guess. Can't believe I got that one. As I mentioned, the patient and baby's chances of recovering from this are very good after the lesions are removed. Chest is already open, so you might as well take the lesions out while you're there. It isn't just me 
me that outsmarted house here though, Cuddy had stolen the show by resisting the urge to perform the abortion. It reminds me of a case of Rianne Santilli, who had a significant bleeding five months into a twin pregnancy. She was treated at the hospital where she worked as a nurse anaesthetist, and the doctors initially said she would have to terminate the pregnancy as it would be too dangerous to continue. At five months, it would be too early for the babies to reasonably survive. Then Dr. Thomas came in and said, you could just sit in this room for as long as you want, it's up to you, giving her a lifeline to help the babies grow until they could hold their own. She stayed there for two months with the help of Allegheny General Hospital and Dr. Thomas until she had another massive bleed again, but thankfully delivered two healthy babies at seven months who are now thriving. I know this is TV, but cases like this do happen in real life and healthcare teams that make them happen should be celebrated. Mad props to Dr. Thomas and his team for sticking out. So my kidneys, liver, and lungs are all fine, just like that? Just like that. Hey, thank you. Don't thank me. I would have killed the kid. I saved a life. I saved two lives. And you do what you did. Mom and baby both die 9.9 .9 times out of 10. Well, not for Emma, and not for her son. Now go away and be happy. I, I hope you come back around someday. They both lived! But will House be able to live with himself? That moment he had with the baby, then knowing that he would have ended his life would be so difficult to deal with. I definitely don't envy people who have to perform abortions, but in some situations, it is necessary work. Cuddy also bought House tickets just at the end there to go on holiday to Vancouver Island, which I've been to. Good surfing. Doesn't seem like he's still in the mood for traveling though, which you can kind of understand. That's the thing with medicine. The work doesn't necessarily stop when you leave work. It's always something that comes into the back of your mind. Did I order that test, make that referral on time, do the right examination? Did I miss something? Those thoughts can come up at the most inconvenient, strangest times as well when you're doing something else. It can be frustrating, especially because on occasion you realize that you forgot to do a task and you can't complete it until you're back in the clinic and it sits on your mind until then. Journaling calendars reminders are very helpful for offloading the brain space for this kind of thing. If it ever affects you, as I bet the same is there for many industries. Really strong episode, to be honest. I say eight out of 10 entertainment, seven out of 10 accuracy, nine out of 10 diagnosis. This episode won't make full sense until you watch the previous one where House treats an oddly familiar face here.